Hey what's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Gap Prod. This time we are going to see this very cool effect that I always wanted to recreate with Shader Graph. It's basically a shield with some ripples when it's hit by something. And I think it's truly awesome. It's a little bit complex this effect, but I will try my best to show you every step I took to achieve something like this. And as always, this project is available on my Patreon page. In case you are interested, I left a link in the description and you can get access to many effects and shaders for your games. So, with that being said, let's see how we can do this. Alright, so if we break this into parts, this needs a shield, which requires an hexagon pattern mesh, an appropriate texture that fits the UV maps perfectly, and then there's a special shader that has vertex offset, Fresnel, and a few more things that we are going to see. For the ripples, we can reuse everything except the shader, because it requires a sphere mask. And I also needed to create a script that detects collisions on a sphere collider. And then there's a few more particle systems to complement the ball effect. So those are the main parts to create this shield. Now for the mesh I used Blender and it was actually fairly easy to create a sphere with an hexagon pattern. All I had to do is start with this icosphere with a subdivision of 3. And the trick now is to turn on Tissue in the Add-on settings. And with this I was able to press this button and transform the icosphere into this, which was an enormous time saver. As I unwrapped the mesh, I end up with faces overlapping each other. But I needed the hexagons and the pentagons to be independent. So to separate them, I selected all the pentagons, which are fewer, and moved them a little bit to the side, ending with this UV map. Now, I had to detach each face, so I can move them separately with the vertex offset in the shader. Which led me to splitting the edges, then separate everything by loose parts. Cool, the mesh is done. With the mesh being done, I exported the UVs and moved on to create this simple texture in Photoshop. It will basically highlight the edges of each hexagon and pentagon. Next step was creating the basis of the effect. Basically, a particle system attached to an empty game object, which allowed me to use the mesh I created in the particle system and assign a material as a placeholder for now. Now, one of the most important parts is the shader. And for the shader, I used an unlit graph, which I opened in Shader Graph and made sure it was transparent. I also moved on to set up the basics of the shader, basically a color in HDR mode, with white and full opacity as default, and a main texture for the hexagons and the pentagons, basically. The texture is connected to a sample texture 2D that will be multiplied with the color. This output will be multiplied with the vertex offset color in case I want to use color from the particle system. Another cool stuff I could easily add is a Fresnel effect. This will make the shield glow, basically, and it adds a really nice touch and I can also control the color and the brightness of the Fresno, with another color property. With the basics of the shader being done, I created a material and added to the shield particle system. And it was looking like this, nothing too fancy for now. But once I adjusted the values of the main color, the Fresno intensity, I got this pretty cool effect. And I noticed I had this dark color, which made me realize I forgot to switch the blend mode from alpha to additive. And now it looks much better and it's more appropriate for a shield effect. 
Now my next step required vertex offset, so I could make all of the hexagons and pentagons move outwards, like if the shield was breathing. And for that I used the position node, set to object, which allowed me now to add modifications to these original positions of the vertex. So I used the time node, multiplied by some value that is going to manipulate the frequency of a sine wave. Next, if I want this to move outwards, I'm going to need the normal vector, which is a perpendicular vector to each face. And I can multiply this by the amount I want to extrapolate. Cool. Now, all I needed to do was multiply the normal vector with the sine wave and add this motion to the current position of each vertex. And after adjusting some of these values, I got this breathing shield, which is really cool. I could make it look a little bit bouncy if I wanted. But breathing is exactly what I wanted, so for now it was looking good, and I was able to move on to the next step, which was adding the ripples for when something hits the shield. And this part required a bit more patience and try and fail, to be fair. But I had this idea in mind that if I used Sphere Collider to get the hit point and pass that position to a sphere mask in the shader, I could get the effect that I wanted. So that's where I started. I added a sphere collider to the shader and a rigid body too. Then I duplicated the shader so I could run some tests without interfering with the original one. So first I got rid of the Fresno because it's not necessary for this. But essentially this awesome effect only requires a sphere mask node. And this node requires a coordinate system input. Basically, what is the sphere space? Is it local or is it world position? So I assigned the world position vector. Then I was able to control the sphere radius and the fade of the sphere, or the hardness, or the smoothness. Call it whatever you want. And the most important part is this last parameter, the sphere center. For this I created a vector tree that I will control via script, which means this allowed me to set the sphere center to the hit point, which is awesome. So I duplicated the shield, made sure it did loop, and it only leave it for one second for now, and I also added a fade out in the color of a lifetime. Then I added the material with the shader that contains the sphere mask. And this is how it was looking. Basically, if I move the center, basically if I move the sphere center, we can see the sphere mask in action, which is really cool. We can see that it fades and it has this really nice touch. I was also able to decrease the sphere hardness and the sphere radius as well, and gave it this orange color too. Really cool stuff, actually. For the next part, I created a script to detect collisions on the Sphere Collider, so I coded this very basic script that detects if something with a bullet tag hits the collider. If so, it spawns the ripples, and this is the most important line. It's the line that communicates with the shader and tells what is the sphere center. But I needed to rename the sphere center property reference in shader graph, so the script could detect it. And to quickly test this out, I created a sphere with a collider, a rigid body, and set the tag to bullet. And at this point it was already looking pretty cool, and it worked like a charm. Every time the sphere collides with the shield, it will spawn the ripples, basically. And for the final touches, all I had to do was add a few more particle systems so it becomes even more interesting. For example, like a flash of light, a shock wave on the ground as well, as another shock wave in the middle, why not? A few trails too. 
the shield mesh with the shield texture with a basic additive shader, a few circles on the ground as if the shield was emitting those little shock waves, and these hexagon and pentagon particles too. And a few more things in the end. And if you want to learn more about particle systems and effects in Unity, I have a lot of tutorials on my channel and I also have a Udemy course where I'll talk about this subject extensively and in an organized manner. I left links in the description and in the comments as well, in case you want to check that out. And now for the shield to have this motion, I used custom vertex trims. And in case you want to learn about that too, you can check out this blood tutorial that uses custom vertex trims as well as this slash effect in case you're interested. But basically, I'm controlling the vertex offset amount in the particle system with this curve. And that's what gives this breathing feeling. At the end, I also added a noise texture to distort a little bit the motion of the vertex offset, so it creates this glitchy thing in the beginning. I think it adds a really nice touch. And then I made a few more adjustments, and this is how it's looking. And honestly, I think it turned out pretty solid, a very cool effect. And I had a lot of fun creating this. And by the way, if you want to know how to shoot projectiles, I also left a link in the description for a tutorial that may help you. So that's it guys, here's another example of cool stuff that you can do with Shell Graph. This project is available on my Patreon page, as well as many other shaders and effects that I have done. Links in the description in case you are interested. And I want to thank every patron that supports me. These videos would be a lot harder to make if I didn't have your support. And I want to say a special thank you to the Super Mega Patrons, which are CJ, Goblin Black, Green Fast Data, Igor Kapkin, James Finlay, Juan Mediola, Mark Brittingham, Nicholas Jave, Remiel, Warden Studios, Javier Nguyen, and Yayoni. And as always, I'm very sorry if I pronounced any of your names wrong, you guys are amazing and your support means truly a lot. And thanks everyone for watching this video, I hope to see you in the next one.